How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. Now on today's show we're going to take a look at one game in the Premier League last night and had implications at both ends of the table. And the last piece of news involves Arsenal because Josh Kroenke has been speaking at a fans forum and he has said they have no intention of selling the club. I represent my fucking self. How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So the first place we're going to start is last night's Premier League game. One match and this was a very, very comfortable one for Leicester. Um, beating West Brom and um, that little revival by West Brom seems to have been short-lived. The great escape by Sam Allardyce looks to be no more. And I think it is very much inevitable that West Brom will be confined back to the championship um, but Leicester, what that means for them, they are getting very, very close to securing a Champions League place and fair play to them. And um, I think when you've seen all that's gone on this week, this is the beauty of football, that teams like Leicester, West Ham still in the mix, can kind of upset the odds. Now, Leicester... The lesser so, shall we say, because won the Premier League recently. We're in the running for a Champions League place last season. So I wouldn't say it's that much of a surprise. But West Ham, most definitely. And that's what football brings. The unpredictability. Um, and that's the beauty of it. That any team at any given moment can do something that nobody expects. And that's why we love the game. And um, yeah, I want Arsenal to be in the Champions League. And I'd love Arsenal to be in Leicester's position right now. But if a team finishes in that position, you've got to hold your hands up. Say you were better. And uh, wish them luck and hope they enjoy the you know, journey that they go on. But yeah, we still got a chance though. Let's remember that. Not via the Premier League, but by... Um, the Europa League, but that's a different matter entirely. Um, but Jamie Vardy finally got himself back on the score sheet. Um, Evans as well. Ian Nacho was on the score sheet. It was just a very, very comfortable game um, for Leicester. And um, like I said, fair play to them. When you look at the table um, and what that does, um, and we'll start with the bottom end, of course, with West Brom. Um, but they sit on 24 points. Um, they still do have a game in hand on Fulham. Um, but they played the same amount of games as Burnley, Brighton and Newcastle. Um, and the closest to them would be Burnley on 33 points. I cannot see a nine point swing with six games left to play. 18 points up for grabs. I can't see it. And goal difference as well could be crucial. Um, Burnley minus 19. Brighton minus 5. Newcastle minus 18. Um, even Fulham minus 18. But West Brom minus 31. So I think, like I was saying, that's... Um, West Brom done and dusted. I feel that they're not going to be in the Premier League next season. Um, but, the, you know, the other end. Hey, Leicester. Big, big win. Um, that's sitting them on 59 points. 32 games played. Um, they open up a gap between them and Chelsea. Um, by four points. And uh, they open up a gap of four points on West Ham. Um, and six points on Spurs. Um, it's very good. Very good for Leicester. And um, yeah, if anybody's going to take those Champions League places, I would love to see a team like Leicester get it. Um, you know, they struggled towards the back end of last season and just missed out. Um, so yeah, it'd be nice for him to do that. And what an achievement that would be for Brendan Rodgers. And um, yeah, uh, a massive win for them. And yeah. Um, They'll be very happy, but yeah, Sam Allardyce, that little revival, short-lived. Um, 
last piece of news involves Arsenal. Now, yesterday, very, very interesting day because there was a fans forum uh, which was held by supporters groups. Um, and then it was announced that Josh Kroenke was going to be a part of the fans forum. Now, for all of you that don't know who Josh Kroenke is, he is the son of Stan Kroenke. And over the last couple of years in particular, he has been very hands-on at Arsenal. Um, he even moved over to London for a sustained period um, just before you know Arsene Wenger left the club. And um, you knew it wasn't going to be uh, the prettiest of... Um, interviews should we say or forums or whatever you want to call it but he got grilled big time and you only have to look at him to know that he just did not want to be there and um, again this is the thing I know it's Stan Kroenke's son and he's a major part of the business and everything else but it's Stan Kroenke that is the owner of Arsenal Football Club why is he not facing the people why is he not got the bollocks to go and do something and say something so i'll go through a few points um that were raised but some of the questions <laughs> he got absolutely ripped on a couple um and there were some where they were just basically saying you do not understand arsenal it's fans the game and you need to leave and it was so blunt and so in his face. Um, but yeah, it was very fiery. Let's just say that. Um, now, of course, it was around about 30 minutes. Um, not long enough, for my opinion. Um, but the question was asked if um, KSE, which of course is the company, um, still considered themselves fit and proper owners of Arsenal. Um, Josh Kroenke said, I believe we are fit to carry on in our position as custodians of Arsenal. Key word in there, I believe. Mm, maybe they're wavering slightly. Um, we were put in a very difficult position by forces outside of the club. We have the same plans for this summer that we have always had and I'm still excited about those. Now, he never actually elaborated on the outside forces and their decision of what they took this week and everything else. And what he was trying to get across is that, you know, this European Super League was like a train and Arsenal weren't aboard that train and it was departing. It was about to leave and Arsenal had to make a decision. Do you get on the train or not? And they decided to get on it. And that was the big mistake they made. Um, he goes on to say that um, I might be met with mistrust. I might be met with scepticism. But over time, I hope to establish some sort of relationship with our supporters groups and show them that we are capable of taking our club forward. Love how he used that word there. Our. Trying to, you know, smooth things like it's our. Look, that stuff don't wash. All right, that don't wash. You was told very clearly in this forum that fans don't trust you. There's not an element of maybe it's we don't. You've had over a decade at this club, or your father has. Over a decade, you've not put a single penny into this club. You've done nothing except watch this club rot. Bit by bit, year by year, rot away and you've done nothing. So you tell me why we should trust you. Nah, sorry, it's gone too far. And I can safely say that the protest tonight will still be happening. Um, he, of course, was pressed on whether KSC might sell the club. Um, and what their exit strategy was. Um, he went on to say that I'm not willing to answer that question because we have no intention of selling. Well, we're going to have to find out how uh, true that is and um, going to have to turn it up a little bit or not, shouldn't we? But um, 
uh, it goes on to say that Josh Kroenke, um, you know, if he was in any doubt over the level of ill feeling towards KSE um, following the past few days, he won't be anymore. Um, from a trust perspective, all of our trust was shredded this week, um, says Kroenke. I understand that which is why I'm here today to try and rebuild some sort of relationship with the supporters. You have my word. You are going to be seeing more of me. I know the trust has been shredded, but you are going to be seeing me try and rebuild that both now and in the future. And he also went on to speak about when he moved over to London before and everything, and he says he wants to do that again. So that'd be interesting to see whether he actually does that or not. Um, he went on to apologise for signing up to the Super League and explained why the club took the decision to sign up. And I was explaining, you know, it's like the train and everything else. Um, he went on to say that uh, they thought about loads of different things and one of them was, what do the fans want? Uh, we tried to answer that question in as many ways as possible. Um, we were obviously bound by certain confidentiality aspects of the decision we were thinking about making. Um, and it was much more complicated answer than we had time to contemplate. Um, he went on to say that he thinks the global fan wants to see Arsenal versus Barcelona as much as possible. Um, I think the European fan wants to see more big matches between top clubs, to be quite frank, because the domestic league is so predictable. Well, I think he got that one right, and the Premier League needs to do a lot to change things there. Um, I think from an English fan's perspective... Um, and this is what was so educating for me. Uh, they want to see more big matches. But as one Chelsea supporter wrote on a sign that I saw online the other day, you still want your cold nights in Stoke, even though we haven't actually played Stoke in three years. Um, I think to me that sent a strong message of the English Premier League. Football in the UK as a whole and the fan sentiment across England. We got it wrong. And that is why we are here today. Um, he was also asked the question about the um, possible repayment for having to pull out and everything else and whether it would be Arsenal that have to foot the bill. Um, and he said, no, it will be KSE that foot the bill um, and they will be taking care of it in its entirety. And it's not actually the quoted eight million. Um, it's a lot less than that, he said. But um, yeah, look, it was a wide ranging um forum um he got put in the spotlight he was in the firing line and like i said this doesn't change a thing absolutely not it's all words it's all hollow you know saying that you're gonna do this this and this boring been there seen it done it heard it all before and we don't need to hear it anymore because it's just like really Come on, man. Proof is in the pudding. And um, as fans, we need to keep turning the screw. We need to keep putting the pressure on. And we need to show them that right now they're not wanted. They're not wanted at Arsenal Football Club. We need a change and we need it desperately. Um, and I can't say much more than that. It's very, 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 very simple. The bridges have been burned. And, you know, as he said, it's been shredded. And for me, it's unrepairable. It's unrepairable and it's as simple as that and uh, what we now need to do as fans as well as put the pressure on the owners is remember to separate the owners from the players and the manager so when the games are on and you know we're trying to get the three points or qualification to the final etc etc then um, we focus on supporting the team and the manager and then this is separate and this was another thing. He was also speaking about his trip to the Europa League final in Baku. That shows how out of touch he is. But he was saying about, apart from the 90 minutes, it was actually a really nice trip. Really. I suppose it didn't really matter because you could get on one of daddy's, you know, private jets and go over there and everything else. Why we had to... Oh, don't even get me started, man, because it just winds me up. This week has woke so many people up so many people up so listen um i can't say much more than that so there we go that is it for today's dt's daily as usual let me know in the comment section what you think about today's topics if you're new around here hit the subscribe button smash a like on this video and i will see you a lot soon i'm out of here